what is God? It seems like a simple question, but there's no universally agreed upon answer. It's something that people bring up all the time. And yet when I say the word, everyone here has a slightly or extremely different image in their head. So first and foremost, rest assured, I promise I'm not here to try to convert anybody. But this is something I want to delve into a little bit. The idea of God, I mean, because throughout my life, moving from town to town, church to church, I've noticed that people love to say the word God, especially when pushing their own agendas, but can get very uncomfortable, confused, or even defensive when they're asked what it actually means to them. It struck me as kind of strange that people were willing to use the word in so many contexts and never provide a definition for it. So how does one go about defining a deity in the first place? Not to mention which ones to believe or not believe in. This is a question that I got more clarity on when I was in middle school and I met my first atheist. Well, I, I know I've met atheists before that. I just had never talked to them about it or understood what it actually meant. His name was Mr. Roshan. And little did he know, he was about to blow my tiny brain. We were in class and somehow or other religion came up as it often does. And he mentioned that he didn't believe in God. I didn't understand this at all. I didn't even know that was like an option. Um, and one of the girls in my class beat me to the question, well, how do you stay good? Like what just, what, what stops you from just doing whatever you want, whenever you want? He looked at us and he said, well, why would you need a reason to be good? Is it really good if you're only doing it to be rewarded? What? Little did he know, this man had just like changed my perception of everything because was I even a good person at all? How was I supposed to be one by following God if I didn't even know what that meant? I decided the best way to figure out what God was was to understand what God wasn't. Thanks to Mr. Roshan, I now knew that God wasn't the same thing as conscience or a moral compass. But that brought up the whole new question of why everyone in my life turned to this God to make their moral decisions. I had to figure this out. And in my search for what God wanted from me, I turned to the only place I knew had to have the answers, WikiHow. Unfortunately, <laughs> While it could tell me how to start a religion, it couldn't tell me how to understand the one I was already in. Though I did come across a couple scriptures provided not just by the internet, but by people in my life that I wanted to touch on today. One of them being John 1.4. Just make sure I get this right. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. In this scripture, the hymn refers to God, but I would just like to emphasize the all people. Um, and there's Isaiah 1, 11. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. There are so many more that I could quote here. So many more thoughts on this text, but this is enough of a mouthful to get across the point that I took away from my research. This God does not want blood and bureaucracy. This God does not want violence. This God is for anyone, meant as a comfort, not a burden. Throughout all of my findings and experiences, I concluded that all God wanted from us was for us to try our best to do right by each other and be kind. And I now knew that God couldn't be something found through the status quo are defined by any one person or group of people. And yes, I realized the irony of what I just said. I had a better understanding of the Bible now, but there was still a piece I was missing. So I'm gonna go on another tangent, but don't worry, I promise I have a point. Up until the pandemic, I viewed most churches as a haven from the violence of the world. Its members, my honorary family, its pastors, my actual family, my parents. But the members of this church that I was in at the time had a very different experience. You see, their former minister murdered his own family. And after years 
of trying to recover from that betrayal as a congregation, it was revealed that the next minister had plagiarized all of his sermons and lied to the community on numerous occasions. I myself was dealing with my own personal stuff at the time, an identity and sexuality crisis, and I was furious at the world for allowing the injustice that had befallen my community and scared for myself carrying the knowledge that members of my own larger faith would not accept me and, and so many others for natural differences outside of our control. I remember being furious because how dare they say that God made us all as we are? How dare they say that God loves us and then refuse to do anything but hate the beautiful people that their God supposedly created? I was so angry. I just felt like I had to get away from the church and, and God and my community for a while. So I rode my bike as far as I could from my little town in Rhode Island to the Atlantic Ocean. And I stood at the edge of the water and I screamed out into the world, where was my God? I had done everything I thought it wanted. This church had dedicated so much of themselves trying to be good. So why were we being punished? If God was supposed to love everyone, why was there so much hatred in the world? How could a God that was good allow any of this to happen to people, especially those who are already suffering? I watched the sun sink into the water and still I cried, why do you let us hurt one another in your house, in your name? I didn't have the answer then. Maybe I still don't, but the more I talked, the less I felt the distinction between myself and the world around me. I started to feel how my tears didn't just flow from my face, but into the water too, connecting me to the whole ocean. I watched the insects bite me but I stopped trying to shoo them away. I didn't mind it. I watched pieces of my life nourish their tiny bodies and it settled on me, not in a sudden moment of epiphany, but a gradual sense of greater connection. Faith wasn't something given to be by the outside world. Faith was the only thing that was left after my voice were gone, was gone and my tears were dry. Faith wasn't something that was that was given to me by anyone or anything else. It wasn't from the outside world, but something within me that resonated with it. I stood up and I looked around. I felt my breath flowing in time with the waves. God hadn't condemned me. I was just trying to follow a voice that was speaking to somebody else. I couldn't let anyone tell me what God was or wasn't because I had been created with everything I needed to define that in a way that would suit me in my journey specifically. Faith was not a prison, but a home. I was just in the wrong one by mistake. And the human parasites that had harmed that church were just like the insects biting my arm. They needed to take pieces of others to survive, but the pain that they caused me and the evil that they were would die almost as quickly as my memory of it would. The body of that church was stronger because it was so much bigger than that, just as I was in that moment. I could feel myself as a part of the world. And so any suffering I had was minuscule in comparison. Because the majesty of the ocean was so great, it didn't matter how much pain I had. The beauty of the world would always be bigger than anything I as an individual could feel. There was a comforting sense of connection between me and that beach. <laughs> And I realized, I finally, finally understood that's why people keep going to church. They want to feel the unity with humanity and the world around them that I felt that day, that I feel when I'm immersed in nature, to understand themselves as part of something bigger than just the sum of their parts. God was just a word to express it. So regardless of who you are or what you believe, something to think about is this. You were made exactly the way you are for a reason, with your doubts and speculations, hopes and despairs, whether that reason be a series of personal choices or some divine intervention. No one can define divinity or your relationship with it for you because real harmony is found through the self and its individual connection to the beyond. You will never be able to make a puzzle if you're trying to fit into a slot made for another piece. All you can do is focus on yourself, 
understanding where your edges are and what they connect to. And the puzzle makes itself clear as others do the same. Thank you for letting me ramble. <laughs>